back to part two of my J Bates miter saw station build. First step of part two was leveling the base cabinets. My garage floor had a decent amount of slope from left to right, so this took a little longer than expected. After leveling the cabinets, I mounted the work surface supports to my wall. These supports are two by two pieces that were screwed into my garage wall using Tapcon masonry screws. I used one screw about every 16 inches. The next step was to add the work surface on top of the base cabinets and supports and to attach the work surface using inch and a quarter screws. I flushed up the edges of the cabinets and attached them to the work surface from beneath and attached the work surface to the supports uh, from the top using the same inch and a quarter screws. Next I cut the hole for the dust collection port. I started the hole with a self-feeding Forstner bit and then cut the rest of the hole with the jigsaw. I'm pretty terrible at using a jigsaw, so this was a bit harder than expected. If you have any jigsaw tips, let me know. Next, I attached the top cabinet carcasses to each other with inch and a quarter screws, then attached these side wings, which help with dust collection with pocket hole screws. I also attached the top support pieces, which are also attached with pocket holes. Lastly, I attached the fence backing pieces using inch and a quarter screws. The next step was adding the top pieces. These are attached with a few inch and a quarter screws to the top. As you can see, I accidentally cut one of my top pieces in half by not following my cut diagram. So I had to end up making up for it with two pieces instead of one, but this worked out fine in the end. I then built the top cubby system, which was simply a long box with dividers. These Bessie 90 degree corner clamps helped quite a bit. I used inch and a quarter screws and glue and made sure to pre-drill the hole since you're going into plywood ingrain and risk splitting otherwise. I attached the back in the same manner with probably a bunch more screws than were necessary. After getting the cubby on top of the miter saw station, I secured it with a few inch and a quarter screws through the bottom of the cubby. The next step was adding all the drawer fronts to the drawers. Since I pre-cut all my pieces, this required a bit of adjusting, but they went together nicely in the end. I used an eighth inch spacer, just an off cut of plywood to space the drawers evenly, and they ended up looking really nice. I used a few inch and a quarter screws from the inside of the drawers to attach the drawer fronts. I then went about setting up the fast cap best fence bench mount system. This took a little trial and error as I realized the platform for my miter saw wasn't level, but the work surfaces on either side were, uh, but I ended up shimming one end of the bench mounts and it worked out fine. And finally, I cut some triangular support pieces for the bottom platform drawer front. I cut this on the table saw using an Incra miter gauge and then attached the pieces using pocket holes and glue. All right guys, I'm gonna call that done. This project has been a real learning experience for me. Uh, definitely got real comfortable with pocket holes, did about 400 pocket holes for this build. Really the only things I have left to do is to add some hardwood, some hardwood trim up along the top edge here and along the edges of the work surface here. I'm gonna use some hard maple scraps that I have left over from a Rubo workbench project I'm working on but my jointer's on the fritz, so I'm gonna wait for that. The other thing is I'm probably going to finish the drawer fronts just to kind of help with wear and tear and that kind of thing. I might finish the work surface as well, but overall it's an awesome project. This has given me so much storage space here in the shop. I'm planning to add some Kaizen foam from FastCap to the drawers. If you're not familiar with it, it's basically a a thick foam that goes inside your drawers and you cut out holes to fit your tools exactly. So it keeps the drawers super organized and you know exactly where your tools go after you're done using them. So really excited to try some of that. But overall, again, this has added so much storage to my shop and really just looks awesome as well and should last for many, many years. So thank you guys for watching this two part series. If you missed part one, Go back and watch it. Uh, it was obviously pretty essential to this build. Please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Uh, we put out new content every week. And if you enjoyed this video a lot, uh, please consider going to our Patreon page. Patreon is where you guys can support content creators like me uh, to keep these videos going. It, it's surprising how much these kind of things can end up costing. So until next time, thanks for watching guys and happy building.